Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, when or wherever you are. This is Avery, and today we'll be going into the fifth episode of our game development tutorial series where we will make a game using C++ and SDL2. So in today's video, we'll be covering how to set up our input class, or input function, in our game uh, using SDL2. But before we get started with that, I have a few things to show you that are new. So if you go back to the older videos, and if you're using, this is for people that are using Windows, there's a few extra se uh, things to set up. So one thing that I keep note of is when you're including the SDL2 library and any SDL libraries, you're going to want to not include this right here, and it will just be SDL, so you don't want the, the, the directory. And then another thing is if you go in all videos, one, two, and three, you can look for, and two and three, they're penned. You can look for the comment by Cody Johns, and he has some more setup on how to fix, uh, how to set up things better in Windows. So that sure helps out a lot. Um, so thanks so much for that. So now, you may notice I'm using a different editor. So I got Visual Studio Code. It's a free um, editor for coding. It works on Windows, Linux, and Mac and I'm just trying it out it's pretty nice it has right here an option to clone a git repository so you can go ahead and just click that you can uh, put the repository that we have in here um, for our game code I'm gonna put that in the description as well and I make it so you can clone it a lot easier that way and it also has add-ons similar to the subline that I was using before so the add-ons I added were C++ add-ons. It actually recognized my C++ file and asked me if I wanted to add these. And then I added another add-on, which is the terminal, so I can be able to edit and run and compile things from here, from within the window. It's pretty useful. So now that we're going to get started, we're going to go ahead and go into our game, uh, game and header class. So there's one thing we want to do that I want to change from last episodes and it's the way that we load in the font right here we load in this font right here but I decided instead of loading it in every single time we'll have it load in one single time so you can go ahead and delete that line and uh, cut it out and you paste it up here and now that is like this we need to change the size and we'll just change that to 24 and now in the parameters we're going to want to delete this size and now we're going to want to go in the header file, delete that, and then we're going to have to add it into here. So it'll be TTF font, font. And then we can remove this from here. And that's enough to make it so that the font loads in better using SDL. So it makes it so you don't have to reload it every single time you want to draw a font. So it makes it so your program will be faster. So now we want to make it so we can add the input function. So right here, we have our input function. We're going to go ahead and get rid of these brackets so we can actually write it. And now we can close out of the game header. So now at the very bottom, we're going to do our input function. So it's going to be void game input and that's the name of our function. So the first thing we want to do is create an SDL event and you can do that this way. And we'll just call the event E. So now we want to have a loop that runs through and reads the event. So we'll do while SDL pull event and then you want to uh, send in a reference of the event. So now this is what we're going to have to do to make it so you can read the events and the events are key presses and such things. So the first thing we want to do is check if the X on our window has been clicked so you can tell it to quit. So to do that you just do if event dot type oh my bad e dot type equals sdl quit and if that happens we're just going to want to set running to false because that's the variable we have to make it so our loop continues and we can just say that we're quitting and now that we set up that we can make it so the window doesn't automatically close every couple of seconds so we can go back into the loop function and we can just get rid of this count and we can go ahead and get rid of that count as well So this makes it so when you click on it, this button, it'll close. But what if you just want to click the your escape button to get it to close? So now we're going to cover over how to set up actual keyboard buttons for things to close. So now we want to do if 
um, e dot type equals SDL key down and now we can check for things so when the key is actually down then it'll say something so one example will be event dot e dot key dot key sim dot sim equals sdlk escape then we can set running to false and there's another thing it's the opposite of this it's when you release the key so if the key is pressed down and then you go up then it'll, it can trigger this so now we can do an example of an actual keyboard press you can just do the same thing as this right up here but you'll I'll show you how it works so it's gonna be key sim dot sim and that'll be equal to SDLK and then so now for any letter on the keyboard you can just do it so that like uh, W if you want to do up with WASD so then that's all you have to do so and then you can call something so we'll just do count up and L or here we can do W down and we'll go ahead and copy this into here and now we can do W up and it's really as simple as that um, now to cover up one more thing I'm going to show you how to get the mouse's coordinates so in our game file we're just going to have to create an integer for the mouse coordinates so we'll just call it mouse x and mouse y and now in here we'll be able to right here we'll do stl dot get mouse um, mouse state and I believe we just pass in a reference and it's as simple as that I believe so now I'm going to we're going to create another file and we're going to use this file to just build our code so every time you want to build it it will be a lot easier so I'm just going to do G++ then we're include all of our libraries and then we'll make it so it can run the program as well and we'll just call this build.sh if you're on Windows, you're not going to be using the SH. You can use um, a bat file, and it would be very similar to this. So now we can go ahead and highlight this, and then to run it, uh, you can do you can either click, um, you can click function F1, and it gives you all your commands. But it'll show you the terminal command is Control Alt R. And remember, if you want to do this, you have to go down here and search terminal and install it. But Control Alt R, and then it'll, it opens this up. And when you do that, it wants you to highlight something. So, yeah, this highlighted, and then Control Alt R. Um, okay, actually, here um, it thinks we're in the home directory when we do this. So I'll just do CD Game Dev Tut. Now Control Alt R. Oh no. Alright, there that ran, but I think there might have been an error. So, we'll just run build. Oh, we have to actually we have to give it permission. So, cmod um, u plus wx build. And now we can run it. Okay, now we can check out any of the errors. Um, so, in game 22, 63, okay. Um, let's go ahead and fix a few of these. All right. Um, yeah, that's gonna be the same error. Okay, and then an eighty-seven. Oh wait. Okay, no. No function declared in class game. Void game input. Okay, it's a lowercase i. Okay, 
Okay, let's try to build it again. Okay, um... Okay, we're gonna have to get rid of the... Right up here. Get rid of the 24, because we don't need the size anymore. And the SDL poll event. Okay, it's P O L L, not P U L L. Alright, and now that works. So now you can see it's not closing on its own, so we can click the X, it'll close. And now if we click the Escape button, it'll close. And now if you hold down W, it says W down, you let go, W up. Alright, it's as simple as that. That's a pretty simple way to set up input. Um, and now, let's also make it so we can make sure we know where the Y coordinates are. So every time it loops through, we'll just have it print out the Y coordinates, and I mean the mouse coordinates. So we can just do count um, mouse X and then mouse Y. So you can see the mouse coordinates only work when you're covering the window, so that's pretty useful. So here's the mouse coordinates, and it's as simple as that. Um, to figure out more ways for input, there is um, STL's website. You can go ahead and look at their wiki, and they have an API by name, and you can find the STL key events. So I'll go ahead and add this in the description as well. But it has a lot of buttons and options. So you can find out more things about controlling the mouse buttons, mouse wheels. We're going to be covering over some more stuff throughout our tutorial when you make our game. Um, so this is enough for today's episode. Thanks you guys so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and see you guys next time.